the client that I had chosen is a school principal and was in need of a way to keep information about his after school activities and also the attendance for these activities in one localized area. So this was going to include student details, teacher details, and also the details of the activities themselves. So the most feasible way to do this was to create a database. So first up, we open the database and we are greeted by the main menu. So this database has been split into five different areas to allow an easier use and navigation of the system. Each section contains information specific to, each, to the title. So the parent area will contain information relevant to parents, the attendance area, information relevant to attendance, and so on. So the first area of the database I'd like to show you about is the parent area. So we use these buttons to click and navigate towards the area. So this greets us with two different options. We either have the add or edit the parents or search parents or generate the report. We also have the back button which will allow us to navigate back to the page previously. So the first thing that we're going to investigate is the add slash edit parents. So this brings up a form that allows for the adding and ed editing of parent information. So we have a set a range of buttons down the below, bottom here. So the first button will allow us to search through these in, this information to find a specific parent. So I'll demonstrate this now. So I know that one of the parents first names is Anne. So we'll type that into the database and we'll find her. So as you can see we have found Anne. We can find her last name, her phone number and her email. However we may recognize that Anne is spelt with an A. We change that and then we hit this button here which is the save button. That has now added the information into the table. We also have buttons for a new record, last record, previous record, next record, first record and also delete record. So now that we've done this, we're finished here. We hit save and we can hit back, which will take us back to this form. Now we want to search through the parents and create a report on this information. So we push here. This brings up a form which has multiple entry boxes. So these entry boxes are the criteria for a specific query, which I'll show later. So we know that the first name of the person that we just added into the system is Anna. So we can then generate a report and we will find that this takes us to a report with a header called parent information report. We have a first name, last name, mobile number and the email address. This report is printable as the information was required by the client to be handed out to staff and also a back button. So if we go back, we can also we also notice that if we just if we don't know the entire name of this parent, we can add in AN for Anna and this will find us all of the parents with the letters AN in their name in whatever order. So we have Anna and Anthony. Obviously we're interested in Anthony and Anna. So there's her record. Okay, so now we can go back to the initial main area and then we can go to the teacher area. So this is going to contain information regarding teachers. So here we're greeted by the same interface again to keep the familiarity and the ease of access at the same level for each area of attendance area of the database. So we can add and edit the teachers. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we're greeted with the teacher record screen where we have the first name, last name, mobile number and so on for the teacher. However, we have these three new fields. So first off, we have the allocated field. This is a tick box which allows us to determine whether the teacher has been allocated to a specific activity. And we can see that Miriam has been allocated and she teaches the book club. So we have the fields here for the different activities, but in this case she is teaching book club. Also I've added an OLE object which allows us to view an image as required by the client of the teacher. So if we double click on this, we will be greeted with a picture of the teacher. Obviously this would be replaced with an actual teacher, but for purposes of security, we haven't, I haven't included any of those. So we agreed with the picture of the teacher and then we can close it. However, we can still use the same functionality of these buttons as they all provide the same thing. We can search for our, uh, through our teachers and I happen to know that a teacher's name is Booker. So we find Mr. Booker and we notice that he has no OLE OLE object. So what we can do to remedy this is we find our images section. We have a predefined picture for Booker and we can simply drag this image into this box 
and it will now be allocated here. So we can save this record. We can double click on it to view it. We are sure that we want to open it. And here we get our image of Booker. So we close this and go back here. And then we can go back to the previous section. And then we can looking for searching through the teacher information. So we can use this in the same way as we're going to search for our Booker. So generate the report on this. And this will generate a report with all this information. So we have our first name, last name, mobile number, email, allocated, and activity taught. This is also a printable report, and we can also include partial completion of the field to find teachers whose names we don't completely know how to spell. We can also look for the teachers that haven't been allocated to an activity, so that they're free to teach an activity which we can assign them to, or the teachers that are already busy, just in case we need to gather them for a meeting or something. We can also determine, we can also look at the teachers who are teaching no activity here, and we can see which teacher is teaching each activity through this, which is handy. So this is all the information regarding the teachers area. So then we're going to look into the activity area. So in the activity area we have the add edit activity which has been introduced beforehand. We can edit the information here and we can edit the course outline, the maximum number of students and the resources. I've added a combo box down here which allows for easy navigation between the fields. So we can choose karate club, soccer club, etc. So in this case we're going to choose book club. And we want to change the course outline, so we can just change it here. Reading books in the library. And that's all. And we need resources such as library 25 books and the library key, for instance. And we can save this record. We have the same buttons down here, and we can navigate through these easily. So now we go back. And in this case, we don't have a rather large amount of information. We don't have, say, 2,000 students to generate a report on. So the information will all be present in the same report. So pressing, hitting that button there shows us the information for all of our activities. We have our book club, catwalking and all that. We have the dates that this occurs at. So this is only on the 27th of August, the second Tuesday of every month for chess club. And activities that require specific resources have been highlighted in orange. Now this was done by using the conditional formatting technique. So we can go to design view and select this box and we can see that conditional formatting has been used so if the expression is false so if there is nothing in this box then we will not have a colored box however if there's something in this box then the format will be changed and this can be seen in our report so these are the fields which are not blank these are blank these are colored this can also be printed so we go back to the student area so in the student area we can do the same functionality that we've done with all the fields previously. So for instance, we know that there's a student called Hank in here. So we want to search for Hank and we find a student named Hank. So what is interesting about this is that we I have created a code which will determine the age for us. So it takes the date of birth and it determines the difference of the date of birth from today's date, which happens to be the 18th of the 12th, 2013. So if we change this person's date to say 1990, as soon as we hit the save button, he will become a lot older. So this was done through the use of actual code. So we can go into design view and select this button down here and we view the code. So this was the code used to write this command. So we see that it takes the date difference between the date of birth value and today's date and divides this by 365 to turn it into years and then it returns an integer value, which means it won't return 12.5 or 18.5, it will return 12 or 18. So that technique was also used. So if we go back to form view, we can see this here, and our student is not 23 years old. We can put him back to what he was and save that. So now the information is saved in the table and can be accessed. So if we go back, we can then look at all the students that are in different groups. So we can search through the information by partially completing of the field, searching HA, we can find Hank, and we can also find all the students in a specific year group. So for instance, we can find all the year 13 students, which are displayed here, and we can also find people in a specific activity, say book club, and we can find all of them here. These are both printable reports to allow the ease of access. Now I'd like to show you the main functionality of the database, which is the attendance area. 
So as a request from the client, we needed to be able to keep the attendance of each activity. So first we're introduced to this screen, which shows a difference, the add attendance. So we press on the adding attendance. Now this activity will allow us to choose which activity we want to add the attendance for. Now the query that works behind this is known as an append query. So we have it here, append activity select. So this query was created using the design view and it will actually append information from one table into another depending on specific criteria. So here we can tell that we are choosing the activity name and this criteria will come from a form called the activity select field form which is the one over here and we also have the activity name field which as we can see here is this field here. So this append query will allow us to choose the activity that we want. Before using this query we have to change some options in access so that the warning information, the warning pop-ups will not come up and clutter the screen. So we can go to file, options and then we can go to the client settings and then we want to untick the action query box. So press OK and we must close and open this to, for it to take effect so we just want to close it and then we want to go to our product here and open the database again. So this will open the database again and now there will be no warning signs. So we want to look at add attendance for the book club. So now the information will be appended from the students table into our fill attendance table as we wanted this information to be input into a form which can then be edited. So we select the choose button and this will bring up all of the students that were in our book club. So now we can go ahead and we can tick the students who are here and so say for instance that all of the students here except for the last one Fonda. So Fonda was not here, she was not present during class. And we can also see that we can change the attendance date. So say we want to change, we want to add attendance for a class that we missed last week, which was on the 12th. We can go ahead and do this. And we hit this add attendance button. So what this will do is it will append the information from the fill attendance table into the attendance table. And after that happens, it will then delete the information here using this delete query, which will just delete all of the information in this table. So if we go ahead and hit add attendance, that will be done. So we go back. And then we want to search our attendance that we just added. So we label the field blank. And then we can see here that the information for the 12th has been added in. Now this isn't a very easy to see format. So then we want to add in our date. Or we can actually change our activity class. Which was the 12th of the 12th, 2013. So we can search for that. And now here we have our class. And as we can see, Fonda was not present. She was not in class. Now. One other thing that we can do is we can search for all of the students that were absent. We can find them and we can find out what dates they were absent on. So then we can go and talk to them and then assess them from there on. So this is very helpful. We can also determine the year level. So we can check all our year 13 students. And these two students have been both present on the 16th and the 12th. So that's good for them. So that concludes my database for the attendance and the after school activity database. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. And goodbye.